Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 140, Constructive Criticism. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my calm and collected co-host, Madison Whalen. Hi, everyone. How you doing today, Maddie? I'm doing all right. How about you? That was a big sigh there. Are you sure you're doing all right? <sighs> yeah. Kind of a long week so far? Mm, in a way. Any problems? Kind of, but, you know, not too, too big. Okay, well, we can talk about that off the air then. Because mm-hmm. that's not what we're talking about, on yep. the show at least. Yeah. What we are talking about is constructive criticism. What if you're told that you're not perfect? Most people should know that already, but it can sting to be reminded. Criticism of any kind can be hard to swallow, especially when it comes to something you spend time and energy on. Inherently, we all want to do a good job. At least most of us do, I think. Yeah. But criticism is just as important as praise, if not more so. Good, constructive feedback can help you improve and guide you towards new heights you might might not have achieved otherwise. And you said I was going to mess up the third segment. Yeah, I figured I'd get all the errors out in the the intro here. (laughs) Uh, That isn't to say giving and taking constructive criticism is easy. But when you know how to take criticism, you become a better person. On today's episode of Insights into Teens, we'll cover what you need to know about constructive criticism, including how to identify it, how to give it, and how to take constructive criticism. But before we do that, though, I do want to invite our listening and our viewing audience to subscribe to the podcast. You can find audio versions of this podcast listed as Insights into Teens, video versions, and now audio versions. We're now publishing our audio versions as Insights into Things as well, so it's convenient for everyone. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, pretty much anywhere you can get a podcast. We would also invite you to write in, give us your feedback, tell us how you're doing, give us your topics you'd like us to address here on the show. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. We're on Twitter at insights underscore things. You can also find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. We're also on Instagram at instagram.com slash insights into things Or you can get links to all that and much more on our official website at www.insightsintothings.com. Are we ready? Yep. Wow, that's that's enthusiastic there. Okay, here we go. So today's source comes from asana.com, right? Okay. So, first of all, what is constructive criticism? Before we discuss how to give and take constructive criticism, we first need to understand what it is. So, constructive criticism focuses on providing constructive feedback supported by specific examples to help you improve in some area. Constructive criticism should be offered in a friendly manner with good intentions. Ideally, the person offering constructive criticism should also be prepared to help brainstorm possible solutions and next steps in order to serve as a valuable tool in the growth process. It's important to note that constructive criticism is not negative criticism, nor should it be interpreted that way. Though constructive criticism won't always be positive, it should be centered around helping someone improve, not tearing them down. So... Constructive criticism can have non-positive feedback, but there's a difference between constructive criticism and destructive criticism. You may encounter feedback that's portrayed as constructive criticism, but is actually just veiled negative comments. This type of feedback is what's called destructive criticism. Unlike constructive criticism, destructive criticism is feedback that isn't designed to help you improve and grow into a better person. Instead, destructive criticism is intended as a personal attack. It's often formatted to harm someone's self-esteem. It can be criticism done in a public setting designed to embarrass you, and it's typically not specific or actionable enough to help you. It can be hypercritical or needlessly nitpicky. If you encounter destructive criticism, don't be afraid to shut it down or ask for help from a mentor. 
Depending on the situation, you, a mentor, a teacher, or a guidance counselor can help you address the situation. There's also benefits to constructive criticism. Even if, even if you give the perfect piece of advice, constructive criticism is still difficult to both give and receive. But don't shy away from this type of feedback just because it's difficult. In fact, constructive criticism can help both you and the person you're giving feedback to grow personally. By practicing constructive criticism, you're building an atmosphere of openness and trust. Not every conversation you have with people will be easy, but difficult conversations are a big part of developing a collaborative team. Everyone will have their own values and practices, but opening the door to constructive and honest conversations can help you break down trust barriers and develop a closer connection with the people you interact with on a daily basis. When we come... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, just keep on reading through that. Mm, probably before, should have stopped. Yeah, it's okay. Before we get to that part, we really shouldn't script the uh, the transition there. Yeah, probably not. So before we go on and, and take a, a quick break here, I did want to kind of get your thoughts on uh, constructive criticism. This was a topic that you came up with. Yep. Uh, you wrote up the the research and everything. on it. What prompted this? What Was there something in school? Was there something that kind of struck a note with you on this? Well, kind of similar to my inspiration for last week's podcast, which I actually also hosted, I also kind of got it from school. My, But it wasn't really, there wasn't enough information on it as much as there was with the whole relationship thing. Um, it was kind of like a small thing that had been mentioned, like, it and... I realized that I had kind of a lot to say, or I had a lot of thoughts going on in my mind about constructive criticism and how I feel like it's not one-sided in any way. It's, it's hard to give constructive criticism in a good way, and it's also hard to take it. And it kind of made me realize that we can probably do an entire podcast about constructive criticism in basically talking about good ways to both give and receive it and kind of also just get my own personal thoughts about it. Okay. Well, this is something that I've had, um, I don't know if I say I've had a lot of experience with it, but as part of my job, I have to give, I have uh, subordinates that report to me. And part of that reporting structure requires me to provide them with feedback. And I think uh, having read through the research that you did here, uh, I think it's all rock solid research because it's all the same type of thing that I tend to adhere to. Constructive criticism is something that is designed to help people. And I think the human mentality itself makes it difficult for a lot of people to uh, take any kind of criticism at all because uh, we immediately get kind of put back on the defensive when people start to criticize us. So – Giving constructive criticism is very important in how you do it. But for anybody who wants to improve, and, and I think we all kind of acknowledge that we're not perfect. There's always room for improvement. Anybody who genuinely wants to improve, whether it's at school or at work or at home or with your friends, you have to be able to take that. And there's a there's a way to take constructive criticism. Um something that you'll find when you're having a discussion with someone and they start to criticize you. You may feel like they're nitpicking or something like that. And you'll listen to them, but you won't listen to them. You'll start trying to formulate a response as they're continuing to give their critique. And we find that when you do that, it's not the best way to listen because then you're listening on the defensive and you're not really digesting the criticism. Um, and you, you know how I treat you at times. You know, it's when you come to me, if you've done a piece of artwork or you've written something up or you've done show notes like for today and you come to me and I think that there's area for improvement, I'll let you know that there's area for improvement. You did a very good job. You put the, the hard work in. But here's how we can improve that. And that improvement isn't just for today's show. It's moving forward. It makes you a better, more rounded person with that. 
And it's never meant to bring you down or anything. It's always, let's build on top of the foundation that you already have. Yeah. Do you find that you get that constructive criticism outside of the house, like at school and stuff like that? I mean, yeah, my teachers always want to help me improve. And especially in some of the more artistic classes, they do kind of give me some constructive criticism regarding uh, what I do. Um saying like, hey, I think you could maybe improve on this, or maybe if you work on this more, you might get better at it. So, yeah, I think a lot of school is also kind of like partly constructive criticism and helping kids kind of deal with that. So I'm convinced that I give you constructive criticism. Are you convinced that Mommy and I give you constructive criticism at home, or do you think that we could do a better job at that that guidance part, that that growth part. I mean, you guys don't needlessly um, compliment me when something happens. You always try to look for opportunities for me to improve um, where I can. You do also provide positive feedback, and you provide your feedback, the constructive feedback, in a good way. And I do feel that, for the most part, you guys do pretty much give... Good enough constructive criticism. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Well, we got a lot to go through here. You ready to uh, dig a little bit deeper? Sure. So what are we going to talk about when we come back? When we come back, we'll talk about ways you can give constructive criticism. Okay. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. Yep. For seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Sith Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Starforge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. Welcome back to Insights into Teens. Today we're talking about constructive criticism. And now we're going to talk about 11 ways you, you can give constructive criticism. So anyone can give constructive criticism, but in, order to do it's, but in order to do so, it's important to approach the feedback session in the right way. If you've ever practiced giving constructive criticism before, or no, I messed that up again. If you've never practiced giving constructive criticism before, try these 11 do's and don'ts to keep your feedback helpful, constructive, and friendly. So, use I statements. I statements are a way to express your opinion by focusing on the situation rather than the person you're talking about. I statements begin with I feel or I think instead of you said or you did. With an I statement, you can make feedback feel less personal by centering it around your experience. By beginning every sentence with I, you're constantly clarifying that you're sharing your, th your thoughts and opinions rather than objective fact. This can help reduce feelings of personal defensiveness that often come with any kind of criticism and makes the entire feedback session more productive. They also say don't use the sandwich method. You've likely heard of the sandwich method, sometimes called the sandwich feedback. Uh, this is possibly the most well-known criticism strategy. In the sandwich method, you start off with a positive note, mention the constructive criticism, then finish off with another positive comment. Despite its popularity, the sandwich method isn't an effective way to communicate helpful constructive criticism. Because you're nesting constructive criticism, there's little opportunity to make that feedback actionable or to brainstorm next steps. Instead, spend your time making your feedback as specific and helpful as possible, no matter how many pieces of feedback you have to give. Now, just a, on a side note here, 
This the sandwich method is one that a lot of management courses and management classes and techniques teach you. And they don't teach you it so that you can provide effective quality constructive feedback. They give it to you almost like it's a negotiating tool um, from, a, from a diplomatic standpoint because they want to kind of cushion the blow or the criticism to the person that you're giving it to. So you give them something positive, you give them the criticism, you give them something positive, and the mentality behind that logic is, well, they'll just, they'll receive it better. And in reality, that's not the case, because at that point in time, you're just diluting the message of what the criticism is, and you're not able to give them really the, you know, for lack of a better term, the meat and potatoes of what that criticism is that you you lose the purpose of it. So they're saying stay away from the sandwich method, which I agree with. They also say you should provide actionable feedback. The goal of providing constructive feedback is to give the person something they can work on. In addition to pointing out what could be improved, good constructive criticism includes ideas and next steps that the person can take in order to further develop their skills. When you provide your feedback, make sure to clarify that you're open to further discussion or brainstorming if that would make be helpful for the person you're giving feedback to. If your feedback isn't actionable, don't give it, or wait until you have something actionable before bringing it to the person's attention. Without actionable advice, your feedback strays dangerously close to, de to destructive criticism rather than constructive help. They also say don't publicly share your feedback, as we mentioned in our introduction, that is really a symptom of destructive criticism. Even the best phrase criticism can be hard to take, especially if the person you're giving feedback to spends a lot of time and energy on the work you criticize. In order for feedback to be constructive and helpful, you want to open a conversation about how the person can improve. This type of dialogue isn't possible if you share your feedback publicly. Instead of starting a conversation, the person might feel embarrassed, ashamed, or personally attacked. They might respond defensively or just move on without internalizing the feedback. Make sure you're taking the time to sit down and chat in order to have the most productive conversation. Either schedule time to give constructive criticism or just have a one-on-one -on -one with them. They also say that you should include positive comments where appropriate. Just because the sandwich method isn't the best way to provide feedback doesn't mean you shouldn't give positive feedback. Constructive criticism shouldn't just be about negative feedback. Telling someone they've done telling someone what they've done well is just as helpful. That way they can spend time honoring their sh oh, no. That way they can spend time honing their strengths in addition to strengthening their weaknesses. Some I, I felt like I was going to mess that up. That's okay. You can honor their strengths too. That's perfectly fine. Mm. You shouldn't force positivity. Just like you want to avoid the sandwich method, you should also avoid forced positivity. The point of constructive feedback isn't to give the person meaningless compliments. It's to help them move forward and improve. No matter what type of feedback you're giving, make sure you think it through and really mean it. Insecure feedback can feel unhelpful and make future feedback sessions more difficult. They also say you should make it a conversation. Constructive criticism isn't valuable unless there is a give-and-take aspect. Part of using I statements is to provide feedback from your perspective. The person you're giving feedback to, though, might have a different point of view. Give them time to ask questions about why you feel the way you do and how you they can improve based on your feedback. Keep in mind that the best feedback is collaborative, not prescriptive. And don't attempt to surprise them with feedback or ambush them with feedback. Giving feedback can be uncomfortable. Sometimes people just want to get it over with, so they just want to kind of pounce and do it. Sometimes it might feel awkward or unpleasant to let the person know you want to give them some feedback. They could come into the conversation on the defensive or have additional questions for you. Though feedback sessions can be uncomfortable, attempting to surprise someone with feedback can turn a potential growth moment into a negative experience. 
If your feedback comes from left field, it can be frustrating, overwhelming, and make the person feel personally attacked. Instead, make sure you let the person know that this will be a feedback session. You should also give feedback in a timely manner. Constructive criticism is helpful e- even if constructive criticism is helpful if it's given relatively soon after the action occurred. That way, the scenario is fresh in both of your minds. If you wait too long, your feedback might be less relevant, which makes it less helpful. Aim to give feedback within two to seven days of the situation. But don't give feedback without thinking it over. Even though you do want to give feedback in a timely manner, you don't want to give it immediately without thought. Even if you had a light bulb moment realization of how this person could improve, wait at least a day to make sure this feedback needs to be expressed and that you can do so in a constructive, positive way. Before scheduling your feedback session, ask yourself, is this feedback something that will help them, help them improve? Do they need to hear this feedback? Am I prepared to help them brainstorm how to improve? And what, if any, next steps can the person take? And finally, they say to maintain a friendly tone and and body language. Ultimately, you're providing feedback in order to help the person improve. Even if the feedback is hard to give, make sure you're keeping your body language positive and your tone light. You might not feel comfortable giving constructive criticism at first, so consider practicing what you're going to say and how you're going to say it. Pay particular attention to your tone and make sure you aren't frowning, glaring, or crossing your arms. Even if you aren't exactly frustrated, these signals can raise the person's defensiveness and lead to an unproductive feedback session. So with all this in mind here, I think that the kind of the gist of it all is really you want to do it I don't want to say necessarily in a friendly manner because you might not be friends with the person, but you certainly want to portray it as a positive thing. Like, you know, Madison, let's sit down. I want to talk to you about how you're writing up show notes. So you're doing a really good job doing the research. There's a ton of great information in there, but we need to format these a little bit differently so that, you know, it flows a little bit better on the show. So, You know, we're giving you a compliment on the one hand for the effort that you're putting in, which is excellent. But we just need to sort of tweak things a little bit. So you're doing it in a way that hopefully will diffuse any defensiveness. Now, when you tend to get feedback like that, or you tend to get any kind of criticism at all, what's your first reaction? Are you open about it? Are you guarded? Do you feel defensive normally? How how do you usually take it? Like, I can normally tell when, like, someone is doing it and, like, they've thought it over and actually know how to give the constructive criticism, thus I'm more open to it. But when people kind of just come out of the blue, I am a little defensive and I'm like, okay, is this person actually serious? Yeah. See, and when when it happens to me, I'm kind of the type of person who I want to know that that the constructive criticism that I'm getting is qualitative because a lot of times people will think they know more or think they know better and then try to provide you some criticism to get you to do something differently. And in the long run, it turns out that they're really not qualified to be doing that. So what I'll typically do is I'll try to be as open-minded as possible. And then I'll ask probing questions to clarify things just to make sure that I'm on the right page, make sure that these people that are talking to me, kind of have thought things through. Because a lot of times what I, you know, I I guess I kind of have a, I usually I have a big picture mentality where I can look at things from a 30,000 foot perspective and see things differently. And and this is kind of what my strength is with my team at work. You know, a lot of my employees are, are down in the trenches and they're very close to what they do. And they may not know that the three things they're doing here are having an effect somewhere else. And I kind of have to bring all that stuff sort of together. So when somebody comes to me and, and they want to provide some qualitative feedback to me, I'll, I'll tend to ask questions. And I'll try to do it in such a way that doesn't sound resentful, although I, I come across as resentful sometimes. I come across as defensive. Um, but... I always felt criticism was a was a two-way street. Do you tend to interact with people 
and ask questions and have a conversation? Or do you feel like it's them sort of dictating to you when it happens? I mean, sometimes it's that. But when I know that they're, uh, they are trying to give me constructive criticism, I might kind of ask questions on like, well, how do you think I should do this differently? Or what do you think I'm able to change that will help? So that's good. I mean, that's the open-mindedness that we're, we're talking about here is, is you're willing to work with a person, but you just want to get some clarification. Do you find yourself in a position to give constructive criticism to others, to mommy or daddy? You know, I know it's hard to give constructive criticism to people that are senior to you, um, but do you have an opportunity to do that or have you done it with peers or, or underclassmen at any point in time? I try to do it with um, other people, sometimes with my friends, sometimes just with people I have to work with. Um, I do try to offer constructive criticism in a good enough way. Okay, good. Is that a frequent thing for you? Not norm not entirely, um, but it happens enough to the point where it's like, okay, I kind of like... Mm. Okay. Do you think any of the techniques that we discussed here today might help you in that moving forward? Probably, yeah. More than likely maintaining a friendlier tone and body language. And I think that's a lot of it because when, when you go into this constructive criticism type of interaction with someone, attitude really is what comes across more than anything. So if you come across as stiff or angry or superior or whatever – a lot of it has to do with the tone of your voice, the posture that you're taking. If you're if you're relaxed and you're friendly and you're smiling and you're you're not up in their face, it helps that interaction. And it, it I mean honestly, it, it helps your interaction on any level, not just constructive criticism when you're approaching people like that. Um, being someone that's big and scary looking like I am, a lot of times I find it. I have to diffuse a situation when I'm having a conversation with someone before I even start it because as soon as I engage with someone, I look like I'm intimidating them. Uh, so it's one of those things, I guess it's kind of a acquired thing over time. So we're going to take our uh, next break real quick here. We're going to come back and then we're going to talk about the six steps for taking constructive criticism. We'll be right back. For seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Sith Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. Welcome back to Insights into Teens. Today we're talking about constructive criticism. And now we're going to talk about six steps to taking constructive criticism. So we've stated ways of giving constructive criticism, but what about, rece what about taking feedback instead of giving it? Accepting constructive criticism without getting defensive can be really difficult. Even though you know the person is giving feedback to help you, it's human nature to feel a little defensive when receiving criticism, even if it's helpful. Hopefully, the person has, has let you know in advance that the feedback is coming. When you know someone has constructive feedback for you, you can prepare for it and make sure it doesn't catch you unaware. Even if you do receive unprompted constructive criticism, as long as it isn't destructive criticism, try these six steps to become better at receiving criticism. The first they talk about here is avoid immediately reacting. 
Feedback can engage our fight or flight response and turn a theoretically helpful situation into an adrenaline filled challenge. Before responding, take a deep breath and resist the urge to react, respond, or argue. And I will say, I actually had kind of an example of this today. Um, in my literature circle group in ELA, we were basically having to finish up our jobs, and the one um, kid who needed to continue his job, I was kind of giving a little constructive criticism, saying, hey, maybe if you do this, your job might be better, and we might better get a better grade. And this is kind of what he did, but, like, he immediately reacted to it and seemed incredibly defensive, despite the fact I was just trying to help him. Yeah, it happens a lot. So, if need be, remind yourself that constructive criticism can help you improve. Even if you didn't know this feedback was coming, try to remember that this constructive criticism is being offered with you with your best interest in mind, in heart, at heart. Yeah, that's a, we got you. <laughs> something like that. We got you. I didn't mean to cut you off there either. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, so, listen to understand, not to respond. When someone is offering constructive criticism, listen without formulating a reply or a defensive response to the feedback. Keep in mind that the person is offering feedback in order to try to help you and try to listen with an open mind. And, and I think this sounds like what your fellow student wasn't doing is they got very defensive. Mm. You should also connect the feedback to your role, not yourself. Feedback feels personal because we think people are criticizing us. But in most settings, constructive criticism is usually based on your role. Good feedback can help you improve in what you are criticized and often isn't as personal as it feels. Thank the person for giving you feedback. This might sound kind of counterintuitive, especially mm -hmm. if you took the feedback from a defensive standpoint. Yeah. But giving constructive feedback is really hard. First of all, not only do they have to listen to or look at what it is that you're doing, they have to analyze it and then come up with ways to help you improve then they have to muster the courage to tell you that because of how difficult it is. Yeah. So when it's appropriate, thank the person for their energy and effort in helping you improve. You should also ask questions, but don't challenge the feedback. Though you shouldn't challenge or reflu refute the feedback, it, it's okay to ask questions and brainstorm how you can improve. If you aren't ready to ask questions immediately after receiving critical feedback, that's okay too. Set up a different time to chat more about how you can improve. When done well, effective criticism can pave the way for a healthier collaborative relationship. That's because collaborative people in these relationships are open and honest with one another and not afraid to talk about their real feelings. So, do you feel you get improvement when you have constructive criticism yeah. heaped upon you? Yeah, um... Well, for instance, when you sometimes criticize me, constructively criticize me about my art, um, I've learned kind of various methods on fixing some of my flaws when it comes to various aspects of my art. And I kind of, I might be willing to show you more because um, I genuinely think it'd be helpful for me in order to improve my art style. Yeah, and I think one of the things that constructive criticism allows us to do is to challenge each other. And the only way you improve is if you're challenged. You know, you don't want to get complacent in what you do. You don't, like for art, okay? You, you don't want to get stuck doing the same styles over and over, doing the same characters and the same types of stories and the same plots over and over because you don't expand. You don't improve. And when we provide you some constructive criticism, it kind of pushes you to challenge yourself a little bit more, don't you think? Yeah. Do you like being challenged? In most scenarios, yes. In other scenarios, not so much. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> like, I guess when I know that... Hmm, academically, in some cases, not really, but... When it comes to my art, yeah, I kind of like to be challenged. Okay. Well, academically, you do like to be challenged, or you wouldn't be taking advanced classes, well, I'll true. tell you that. Well, true. Okay. Well, in certain inst 
Certain instances I can't really describe, I'm not really as okay with challenges since I'm a perfectionist and if I don't do something right, then... Mm. You're usually pretty good at rising to those challenges, though. True. The other thing I noted in going through the research you did here was the policies or the philosophy of constructive criticism is kind of similar to our, you know, policy that we have on this podcast about failure. That, you know, you learn more from failure than you do from success. Yeah. And you tend to learn more, you improve more from criticism than you do from praise. Because if people told you how great you were all the time, you'd never have a reason to, to change or improve yourself, right? Yeah. So constructive criticism is a good thing when it's done right. It's just very difficult sometimes to do it right. Yeah. And like you said earlier, it is a two-way street. You need to be able to give it and you need to be able to take it. You don't sound like you have too many instances in which you get to give it at this point in time. Mm. Yeah. I mean, like, I try to give it when I can. It's just, I guess I kind of needed to, one, practice it a bit more and two, probably need a few more instances and which I can maybe give it. Well, and I think it's one of those things that the art of giving constructive criticism is something that comes with age and experience. And as you get older and you take on a more mentoring role, if you if you tutor students, um, you know, as you become an upperclassman and people look up to you a little bit more, I think you'll probably have more opportunities in which to do it. Um, but I think the important thing right now is to learn how to take it more, to, to, to be better at taking that constructive criticism, but do it objectively. Don't take it verbatim. Don't take it defensively. When somebody suggests something, ask for clarification, ask questions about what they're asking you to do. They talk about brainstorming. You know, the whole purpose of this is to, you know, show you where you might be weak and talk about and brainstorm how to improve things. That brainstorming is a two-way street as well. So it's an opportunity for you to bounce ideas off of someone else when they're when they're giving you that constructive criticism. You know, they may suggest a couple of things. You can suggest alternatives. We do this all the time, you know, when we're talking about things. It's always back and forth. And, and I walk away learning more about the things that we're – involved with when it comes to that stuff as well. So even if I'm the guy who's giving you the constructive criticism, it's still a learning experience and a growth experience for me as well. Yeah. So I think that was all we had for the show today. We're going to take a quick break. We'll come back and we'll get your closing thoughts and shout outs. All righty. All righty. So I just wanted to say to everyone that constructive criticism is a good thing, and it needs to basically be done properly. Again, it is a two-way streak. You have to be good at giving it and be good at taking it. It is difficult, but it is definitely better than just constantly praising someone. Giving someone that little bit of criticism will help them improve tenfold. Okay, very good. Uh, that was all we had for today, but before we do go, I do want to once again... Reach out to our listening and viewing audience and invite you to subscribe to the podcast. Uh, audio versions of this podcast can be found listed as Insights into Teens. Audio and video versions of this podcast can be found uh, listed as Insights into Things. Uh, we're available on Pandora, Castro, Stitcher, Podbean, Buzzsprout, any place you can get a uh, podcast these days. I would also invite you to give us your feedback. Reach out to us. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can find high-res versions of all of our videos on YouTube at youtube.com slash insightsintothings. We do stream five days a week on Twitch at twitch.tv slash insightsintothings. You can find audio versions of this podcast on the web at podcast.insightsintoteens.com. Or you can find links to all those and more on our official website at insightsintothings.com and you. And don't forget to check out our other two podcasts, Insights and Entertainment, hosted by you and Mommy, and Insights into Tomorrow, our monthly podcast hosted by you and my brother Sam. That was very important since I skipped the 
commercial for Insights and Entertainment this week. <laughs> yeah, we're s- sorry. <laughs> sorry. Sorry to our sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> so that's all we had this week. Uh, another one in the books. Bye, everyone. Bye.